Hey there, it's Lenny Gray, the door-to-door -door millionaire, and I'm joined by a good friend of mine, Elijah Bryant. And if you've been hiding under a rock the last few years, uh, Elijah's a professional basketball player, three years in a row, three championships. That's yep. just what he does. He just wins championships. <laughs> but uh, three years ago with the Milwaukee Bucks, yeah. NBA championship, Euro League championship two years ago, mm -hmm. and just barely coming off a Turkish League championship. Exactly. What, what, what is this? You just, you don't know what second place is? I, I, I guess not. Well, you know, thanks for having me though. Yeah, absolutely. So I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit about uh, professional sports mm -hmm. and sales because I think there's a, a lot of commonalities between those, those two things and, and really just in life. Yeah. Uh, I look at you, I know we have a lot of conversations uh, about number one, routines. Yeah. We talk about you have a specific routine that you have to you live and die by on game day or on practice days. How have routines, which I think, again, similar for door-to-door -door sales reps especially, we kind of have our routines. Um, how have routines played a part in your career basketball-wise? Yeah, so I think for me, you know, routines, there's a lot of anxiety now that basketball takes care of my family. So does this one shot make my kid not eat? You know, yeah. so um, understanding that there's a long season and not banking on, you know, one game to determine whether my family's gonna, you know, we're gonna survive this year. And I found that having, you know, routines and, and, and systems to allow me to not think as much when the game day comes or practice comes, but with that, it's not just a game day routine, it's a practice routine, it's a morning routine, it's everything is routine so I can save that RAM, you know, like in a computer, for the decisions I need to make. Okay, uh, I'm going out of town. What is my wife gonna do? Okay, that's a decision I need to make. I need to use some RAM for that. But what shirt I'm gonna wear, doesn't need to be a decision I'm gonna make. What, if I'm gonna get in the sauna in the morning, doesn't need to be a decision. Ice tub, doesn't need to be a decision. Weights, doesn't need to be a decision. So all these things are routines and not only are the routines and systems are important, but um, making as little friction around those routines. So let's say, you wanna work out, lay your clothes out at night. That decreases the friction for you to go and work out. So I think for me in my career, um, and really anyone's career, um, creating systems and routines that uh, decrease the friction for you to get that task done. Yeah, now, and in sales, again, a lot of times we have our routine, we have things set up, we have an appointment scheduled, somebody doesn't show. Yeah. It's a no show for the appointment. So how do you, or what advice would you give when that routine doesn't go necessarily as planned? Yeah, so playing overseas basketball, there's a lot of things you can't control. You know, the travel, sometimes you go to a gym and the rim's a little quicker, it's not. So when, when the NBA players had the bubble and they were complaining about the food, I was like, no way guys, come on, are you being serious? Like you have everything catered to you. So for me, specifically this year, I, I, I was in a game um, and you only can play with five players in the Turkish League, uh, foreigners. So I wasn't in the roster for that specific game. So I was before the game, you know, practicing hard, getting a sweat on because I wasn't playing that day. So 15 minutes before the game starts, uh, my coach comes and tasks me, says, hey, you're playing, so-and-so's back is bothering them. And my initial mindset is, well, was me. Why, why, it's not fair that it is. But then I realized, A, I'm not getting out of it, and here's an opportunity to grow. So what did I do? I went into this mindset that Navy SEALs use is full benefit. What am I gonna get out of this situation that is gonna allow me to progress? So I go straight into, okay, how from this point, how can I get as ready as possible for the game? You know, foam roller, doing my stretches, clamshells, all that stuff. The, the stuff I can't control, then so be it, I let it go. And when you're in those situations, like I said, a, a noise will come, you know, mm. oh, you shouldn't be doing summer sales or, oh, you can't wear. So my manager comes to me and says, you have to wear this specific warm up because it's our sponsor. Well, I had warmed up in the jersey and it was, it was sweaty, so I'm not wearing it. So it's, it's about blocking out the noise and, you know, getting the full potential around um, your systems, even when adversity comes. Right. No, and that's important because, again, in sales, it's the same thing. We're always throwing curveballs, no mm -hmm. matter what you think is going to happen or could happen, you, you just never know, you know, on the doors what's going to be behind door number three. You know, exactly. it's always a, a friendly surprise or maybe not so friendly yeah. surprise sometimes. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about, I know with you, confidence plays a huge role uh, on the basketball court. And I think for sales reps, I preach that as well. Like you have to have confidence. You can't act surprised if somebody says something and you're not quite sure the mm -hmm. answer. How, how do you use confidence as a professional basketball player? 
Yeah, I think it's a borderline um, as professional athletes at this level um, between confidence and cocky, right? Yeah. And you have to straddle that line. Um, some players are a little bit more cocky, um, but to play at this level, you have to have that kind of attitude. And I think for me personally, being a guy in high school that wasn't a top rated, didn't have the athleticism, wasn't tall enough, for me, it was my faith and my work ethic. And I knew if I did those two, it would put me in a position to be ready for when the opportunity comes. Because I don't think the opportunity is going to come five times, but it's going to come, but you have to make sure you're ready for that opportunity. So for me, it's always been, you know, reps removed out. If I'm putting in the reps, eventually it's going to crack and I know that I'm going to be able to be ready for that opportunity. So that goes back to my systems, my routines, just having things in place to put me in a position that when I get to the to the um, game, I have confidence and it even goes down to my, my weight routine. I, I know that in the game, I don't have to think about getting in this angle because I know I put my body in positions through the off season my morning routine and my weight sessions that I don't have to think my body's primed and ready to go. So I think everything I do before the game, preparation, mental preparation, meditation, stretching, all that stuff gives me confidence in the game. So there, if there's times where, hey, we don't get there for the warm up and stuff, I will make sure that I'm warmed up before I go out there and shoot. If that means I'm not going to shoot as much because I, that's giving me more confidence than my shot. I've shot the ball plenty of times, but I'm trying to get as confident as I can when I get on the court to be able to perform at the highest level. Yeah, and, and I feel like for me, when I first started doing door-to-door, -door, it probably took me about a month until the light bulb went on and I went, man, I've kind of heard everything that yeah. people are gonna say to, to reject me, yeah. and I feel like I have a pretty good response to that. And mm -hmm. so I think that confidence grows with experience, mm -hmm. with putting yourself in those positions when you're practicing. I'm a big fan of practicing mm -hmm. in, in training meetings and those types yeah. of things as well. Uh, you'd mentioned faith. I know mm -hmm. faith plays a huge part in, in your life. How does that translate as a professional athlete? Yeah, faith is the, the, the foundation of everything that um, my family and I are trying to build, right? I think it gives you perspective on life because our ultimate, you know, goal is to come down to this mortal earth and learn and grow and have experience and then get back up um, to our Heavenly Father. So for me, you know, have a bad game. I go through my whole system, my, my, my equations get back, but then I come home to my kids and then it's kind of perspective, right? It gives you the whole eternal perspective. And not only does it give you perspective, but it also grows respect from my teammates because they understand that um, I'm devoted to my family and my profession, so I'm not going to be going out and drinking. I'm not going to do um, whatever stuff they have going on that doesn't follow the morals that I have. And it's allowed me to pass other guys that maybe were more talented or had chance to make it to a high level. So I think um, it's the foundation to everything for me. Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's important. I, I talk about that in a lot of my trainings as mm -hmm. we talk about having some kind of a faith-filled foundation. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who you worship yeah. or, or what it is, meditation even, mm -hmm. you know, just some quiet time to reflect. I think that's important for anybody in, in any aspect of, of their life for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, just talk to me a little bit, um, you know, you're, you're an entrepreneur yeah. at heart. Yeah. You know, that, that's I think why we yeah. jive yeah. really well yeah. is, is we, we love to talk, you know, during the season and yeah. off season, hang out and talk about just businesses yeah. and, and making money while we're sleeping and yeah. those types of things. Talk to me how that's played a role or, or how your mind kind of looks beyond professional sports as well as, you know, even for, for sales reps. Like yeah. we can't all go knock doors forever. We got to look beyond the doors sometimes exactly. as well. Yeah, so I think for me, understanding um, the reality of my profession, right? So. Let's say max, I can play 15 years um, after that, then what am I gonna do? How am I gonna make money? How am I gonna provide? And I think um, as the, you know, the gospel says, live within your means. Um, so, you know, I drive my college car, my wife drives her college car, we live um, with our in-laws when we're, when, we're, when we're in town. And it's not that we can't have it, it's that we're saving that to put in something that can create passive income, make money while we sleep. And I think, um, if you're able to do that, it brings, it's gonna bring a lot less stress when you're done. So you're able to take a few years off, you know, relax. But I think, like you said, making money while you sleep. I played basketball for, you know, 26 years. Um, now I'm 28 years old and taking my experience and knowledge and, and monetizing that, but also providing a asset um, that people can learn from and help them, you know, jump over the, the potholes that I, the mistakes that I made, um, coming to be a 
basketball player. So whether it's, you know, real estate, uh, stocks, you know, making, um, you know, like we talked about the AI bots that can answer your questions. I think um, it's, it's kind of like trying to like, you know, cheat the system to be able to spend more time with my family because that's my ultimate goal is to um, spend more time with my family. And I listened to a podcast today actually with, with, with Chris Paul talking about that's one of the things that he has a hard time reconciling with is, okay, yeah, I make all this money. Yeah, I do all this stuff, but he misses a lot of his children's events. And what made him think of that is they were watching a video. He was very close with his grandfather and it was a video, home videotape. It was his 60th birthday. And he kept asking himself, where am I at, where am I at, where am I at? And then you hear his brother, he said he heard his brother say, Chris would have said this if he was here. And it broke him because he's like, dang, okay, yes, I was playing AAU basketball then, but he started flashing his head how many things he had missed. So he says, you know, during the off season, he's trying to be as present as possible, but also, you know, understand that um, he's trying to be the best at his craft as he can be. You know, we're always trying to, you know, fill the family bucket, fill the professional, we're always, it's always a balancing act. So. That's what I'm trying to do. Awesome. No, well, you're doing a great job. Uh, lots of good things happening in your life. Baby number two, yeah, yeah. everything else going on. Uh, again, just continuing to win championships. Yeah. In fact, you got the ring, yeah. Milwaukee Bucks, NBA yeah. championship right there. So yeah. I'm sure you wear that around all the no, time. No, I actually know. never wear it. I just, <laughs> I mean, I thought it would be a good, you know, to give some context, but I think, uh, yeah, it's a symbol of success. But um, to me, the work is, the success comes and the work just for me gets I always trying to find ways to to motivate myself even as um as I continue to progress in my career absolutely so if somebody wants to follow you uh, you're all over social media where where can they find you yeah you can find me I mean Elijah Bryant 3 or Elijah Bryant um, pretty much on every social and you'll find you know God family um, sports health and really into health um, just kind of trying to live have a a realistic approach to social media. Now there's good days, there's bad days, but kind of show that in an um, organic manner. Awesome, awesome. So see, there you go. There's a tie between professional sports, yep. knocking doors, if you're in sales. Yep. I mean, it's, it's all, we're all in this world and we're all trying to figure it out together and there's so many things that overlap. So yep. great advice, appreciate the time today, brother. Of course, okay. thank you.